Welcome back, Sean. This is part two, two, two B. Let's call it two B. This is part two B of the interview with Sean, the big discussion, big conversation with Sean about the GH5. You want to start that over again so you don't have that thing on camera? Uh, you know what? I actually, I honestly don't care anymore. So go for it. <laughs> All right. So to those who were giving him grief last time, get over it. It is, <laughs> it is uh, what, seven, quarter after seven in the evening where you are. Uh, it is It is time for a, a tasty beverage. Yes. Yes, it is. Okay. So this is part two B. We're going to call it that of our interview with Sean. And um, if you haven't seen part two A, then jump back and see that or click somewhere. Anyway, just you'll figure it out. All right. Part two. We're <laughs> on to color. Um, questions about the GH5. Color. Sean mentioned, and this is referring to the first video, Sean mentioned that there is an improvement on how the GH5 reads color and that the GH4 had a color cast to it. Will the GH5, and this is a great question, will the GH5 seamlessly match the GH4 when both cameras are set to the same settings? That's a really good question. Uh, that's that's a <clears throat> very, very good question. Because a lot so, of people are going to use the GH4 as a B camera once they've uh, mm -hmm. bought a GH5. So um, I think the easiest way to answer this is if you shoot log, um, of course, it'll be super, super easy to match colors. Um, if you're shooting standard or vivid or natural, um, it's, it's going to depend. Um, if you're trying to match the two cameras, I would definitely suggest shoot natural on both cameras. Okay. Natural with Panasonic is, is exactly what it means. It's to be natural reproduction of colors. Now, the GH4, because of the way it, it monitored color and rendered each individual color, um, there were some color casts with it, uh, and and we recognized it, and we made steps to improve it on the GH5. Um, so I'd say you won't have any harder time matching the color in the GH4 to the GH5 than you would from the GH4 to the G85 or the GX85. Okay. Um, every camera always has a slight um, difference in its color processing. Sure. The reason why I brought it up um, is that the GH5 actually goes to a much, much different um, process to determine pixel color. Um, typical cameras read, um, and I'm going to go a little bit technical on this, um, typical cameras read four pixels to determine the color of a single pixel. Um, and that gets you, for the most part, that gets you pretty accurate. Um, the GH5 reads nine times that area uh, per frame per pixel. So what this means is that when you look at a yellow, it's going to be yellow. It's going to be an accurate yellow. It's not going to have a green hue to it or a magenta hue to it. It's going to be yellow. Um, and yellow is one of, the no, uh, one of the colors that people will notice the most mm. um, when color's off. So with the GH5, because we're doing that, because we're doing a lot of the the, um, excuse me, because we're doing a lot of the other um, edge detail uh, recognition, things like that, it means that overall the color and the, the cast that, typic the, that pretty much any camera always has is very, very different. So if you're shooting standard on a GH4 and standard on a GH5, you will see a marked difference in the color. If you want to try to match them, shoot natural on both or shoot V-log. Okay. All right. Yeah. Great answer. I like that. Telling you how to do it. <clears throat> Excellent. All right. Try to. Next one. So that was the only one we had under color category, but I'm sure the more will come up. Um, next oh, one is course. simply feedback. I should have put this at the end, but I really think he really thinks, really thinks that Panasonic should have done similar to Fuji and the X-T2 grip. You could use the grip to accommodate the extra IO. The X-T2 grip on the Fuji has headphone jack, which would solve the screen rotating issue. You could then provide DC input as well as charge the batteries via USB Type-C. If it also had HDMI out, it would totally free the screen of the GH5. That would also turn it into a YAG, but... Um, basically. Basically, yeah. <laughs> and we all saw how well that worked. Yeah, the YAG, the YAG, <laughs> for anyone who's not familiar, is, and I don't have it handy here, but it's a... 
significantly okay. not a lot of people do <laughs> i've got one i have one it's just not here a uh, significantly sized add-on that went to the bottom of this it wasn't just a straight down like a battery pack it stuck out it was a honking thing that required dc power it didn't work off of batteries and so i think what this person's asking and i'm, I'm i don't know why i'm answering the question for you but um <laughs> this person's asking about would add a ton of stuff into there and basically make it the size of the yeah but he's saying that the fuji did it so um so there you go there's the question for you if fuji can do it why can't you yeah 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 <laughs> so no that's um so okay it's it's an incredibly valid question and it's it's something that honestly um a number of us in the audio in the uh, office really did ask we asked a lot about like so with the the battery grip can we do this can we run ssds through the battery grip i mean that that'd be amazing but if you look at it, the, the the reasons that that um the person that put this question in about you know freeing up the the monitor rotation, um, look, I get there's a number of people out there that have an issue with it. Um, I I I fully understand that. The thing is, is when I've been out in the field and I've talked with a lot of of people working um with with the camera in in LA, in, in true broadcast, things like that. Um, there's a number of different trains of thought and honestly, none of them are hundred percent right. Um, and, 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 and I, I, I don't mean this in a way to demean like the question or anything like that, because it is a very valid question. The way you work, it would be better if you had these ports offloaded to something else. Sure. The reality is, is that that makes it a less attainable product to most people. If you limit what a camera can do by having you have to go buy this extra piece because it wouldn't be included with the camera. If it was included with the camera, you'd have exactly what we have here built the way it's built. Um, it, it builds complexity into a system that doesn't have to be complex. You make the best use of the space that you have. And, and to head off the questions of the people that I know are going to come up by me saying that about, well, why couldn't you just move the headphone jack up a little bit higher or down a little bit lower? You're also limited with the actual board, the the PCM board that's in the camera. You know, you, you only have so much space that you can put components on a board and how it's designed. I will say that the headphone jack is moved up from the GH4, so you have less of an interference than you did on the GH... Uh, on, I'm sorry, headphone jack is moved up on the GH5 compared to where it was on the GH4. It's marginal. It's not a big move up, but in every single situation that I've spoken to, um, and that's been in LA with a room full of ASCs, um, and then in um, in uh, uh, just at WPPI recently, I never once ran into someone who that was the defining factor for buying a camera or not buying a camera sure. because every camera has some limitation with it. Sure. Um, as for, I, I'm just reading the question again here. So, as for like providing DC input as well as charging batteries via USB C, um, USB C charging is not possible on the GH5. Um, it's not going to be possible on GH5 because the battery capacity is much larger than what you see in our competition. Our competition can charge over USB because the actual um, power supply that they're using, those batteries, are very low milliamp hour you would have to sit and charge the camera over USB, which would be a trickle charge for an entire day to charge a battery. Um, and that means that you wouldn't be able to actually use the camera with that power supplied that way. That's why we still sell the DCC 11, I think the, um, external battery delete for the camera. It's the same as a GH4. Um, it's the same that was in the GH3, uh, because USB just doesn't have that robustness yet. Okay, so um, that question yeah. that comes up later, so we'll we'll have to make sure we get that addressed here on the on the notes. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm gonna I'm gonna challenge you on that one because the the new laptop from Apple, and I know they're not the only one. It's all it has is USB C, including for charging. Correct. The difference is, look at the amount of space you have to work with to put the right controllers in there. Okay. Versus what you need on the size that you're working with of the camera, and also with what you're limited to with what our levels of heat generation are in are within acceptable range um charging over usb produces heat you're you're producing heat you're running current to the board um it is a different um 
set of I, I I'd say just basically it's a different set of rules between a laptop and this. I okay. think what Apple's done with the new ones is is phenomenal because it shows what you can do given the right amount of space and the proper design for something like a laptop. Uh, cameras are a lot more complicated, I think, when it comes to that because you can't overheat the board, you can't overheat the sensor because then you damage the sensor. Um, it 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 would be great to see it, but um, I've I've been told that yeah, the GH5 is not going to ever have. Okay. USB charging, um, okay. just because of a number of limitations that we have on reliability and and performance in the long run. Okay, all right, fair enough, fair enough. And when that question comes up again later, we'll just tell people to scroll oh, back yeah. at this point. Okay, um, I think we've we've answered that question as much as it can be answered. All right, focus. We're on to focus. You got a bunch of focus questions here. Can it, it being the GH5, punch or zoom oh, in? You mean the the character? <laughs> exactly. Can cousin it? <laughs> <laughs> Can it punch in while recording for focus checking? Uh, unfortunately, no. Okay. Um, the amount of from from what I've been told, the amount of processing power needed to have stabilization run, have focus peaking, and have punch in while recording um, is one of the kind of like the hardware limitations with most cameras. Hmm. To my knowledge, even in our competition, um, there's limitations to what it can do. Um, so, unfortunately, no, it doesn't. Okay. But punch in before you start shooting, start shooting, it pulls out. Yeah, and, and focus peaking works. You have multiple different levels of focus peaking accuracy and level of, of um, color, things like that. So More than what you had in the GH4? Um, I think you have a couple more colors in GH4. I honestly haven't picked up my GH4 since I got this camera. <laughs> Whatever. <Sorry. laughs> Show off. I also haven't picked up my G85 since I got this camera. So. Yeah, well, I know. That's the problem with these things, isn't it? You get one, you're like, yeah, that's the, everything else is dead to me. Okay. That's the quote problem when you work for the Yeah, manufacturer, well. Right? <laughs> okay. Um, I have assigned a button to the GH4 for quick autofocus and manual focus mode so I can then find so I can then find and adjust manually. So back button focusing is what they're talking about. Push a button focuses and then mm -hmm. tweak it manually. Will this be possible in full HD and VFR mode on the GH5? So basically, do you get autofocus in VFR mode? No. Not while recording. <laughs> but you can focus yes. before you hit record, autofocus. No, in, in VFR, it completely disables the autofocus system. Oh, really? Okay. Um, so even if you're doing, um, like if you're trying to do something like this where you have it pre-focus, um, it's, it's not going to let you do it. Um, I don't know what the exact reasons behind that are, um, to, to be quite honest with everybody. Um, but the, the system still, VFR still works identical to the way that works in the GH4. There's no autofocus, there's no audio, um, and you don't have that ability to like toggle rear button AF. If you're in full manual focus on any of the regular recording modes, yeah, you can set it so that you can do a quick, um, you know, push into focus, get it where it needs to be, and then fine tune it with manual focus. So, okay, yeah. Okay. Like I said, not every answer is going to be yes. Um, can you toggle? Oh, I like this. Yeah, I, actually, this might be my question. <laughs> can you toggle video continuous focus on or off more easily via a, a function button? Uh, so the question I was specifically is there's a continuous autofocus switch that's on or off and i could we can just look this up and you're gonna look it up um, i'll explain yeah. it you look it up so you can turn continuous af on or off and what that means is the camera is going to continuously focus even if you're not pushing a button while it's in recording mode and that is buried a couple menu layers deep and so the question is can that be added to a function button so i can toggle that on and off with one tap um survey says so you know this this actually came up in um one of the touch and try events that I was working at. Yeah. Um, somebody asked the same question and you know, I, I never got around to actually looking back into it. Oh, well there you go. Um, so the, the answer as of right now is no. Okay. Um, because, um, and, and for, for clarity, for those that don't know what we're, what we're talking about, when you switch into full, uh, to, to video, you have to go into the menu and say, do you want continuous AF, AF turned on or off? Um, as it sits right now in the Lumix system, you have to do that through the menu. You can't do that through an assigned custom function button or through an on-screen uh, custom function. Um, however, the fact that this has been brought up actually a number of times, <laughs> and honestly, I think it's been something that like myself and a few others in the office may have just, you know, overlooked in our conversations with them. Mm -hmm. Um, 
it's definitely something that that we will bring up um, harder with the the team in Japan to um, at least take a look at, see if that's something that they can put into a function button. Because I mean, we have stuff like being able to toggle VFR on and off, right? Um, or toggle waveforms on and off. So uh, I. I don't necessarily see why it can't be done, um, but I can't make promises as to when or if it would ever be done. Um, but um, you guys have my word that I'll uh, push that with the uh, our, our engineers to see about what we can do on that one. Okay. Cool. I'm trying to find... Oh, it's... Okay. I've been trying to find the, the commands in here, um, but I see it's now it's just a, a layer deep to get to where you can program the buttons. Function button set. Now I found it. Program yes. the record mode. So this is what we're looking for. So, um, okay. But you're you're confident it's not that. Whoa, there's a lot of new stuff in here. Uh, oh yeah. Wow. There's there's yeah. 20 customizable custom function buttons now. Wow. Seriously? Jesus. Because yep. you because because you have to count the four way directional pad on the back and the four way uh, joystick. Wow. Slick. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> Man, that really makes it. You you program this thing to be your camera, and baby, that is your camera. But hey, oh oh, and can, then you can save the settings. And then you can out save and the settings. Else. I love it. God, that is just fantastic. Okay, um, let's see. Where are we? Can you zoom in during playback? So punch in during playback in video mode to check your focus. Um, I don't believe you can, um, and I think that does just come down to processing power. I'm gonna. Yeah. Try. Um nope. so yeah, okay. there's there's no um punch in during during video playback. When you're actually playing the footage back, um you can't punch in and, and watch a cropped version of it. Okay. Um and I, I that just comes down to process. Yeah, power. that's that's fair. Okay. Can you control speed between focus touch? Oh right, okay. Can you speed control speed between focus touch for effectively doing focus pulls? Meaning when you right now when you you have tap to focus on the screen, you touch on the screen, I touch on Sean's face, touch on the background, it focuses on that. And right now it focuses as quickly as it can, which is pretty damn fast. Can you control that to make it slower so that you could effectively do a focus pull by tapping on one point, hitting record, tapping on another point and having it slowly rack focus to that position? So yes and no. Um in just regular recording mode, no. The reason why I say yes and no is that if you use the focus transition mode that the camera has now, uh, which is pre-programmed uh, focus pull locations, yes, you can you can change it out. You have a number of steps right. in focus speed uh, uh, for that. Um, if you're just tapping the back of the screen to pick your focus, no, you don't have control over it. And that's actually why... Um, that's why focus transition was added um, because typically if you're going to do a, a focus pull or do something where you need it to be a set speed or you need it to be a set um, function, it's usually because you're trying to do it as a repeated or, or a repeatable mm -hmm. motion. Um, so in regular recording, no. In focus transition, yes. Which is what it's for in focus exactly. transition mode. Okay. All right. Can you combine rack focus, which is this focus transition, I think that's what he's asking, with time lapse? Ooh. Well, that's cool. So this one gets even a little more uh, a little <laughs> more fun. Because um, you can't um, basically because when you turn if 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 you're doing time lapse, um, where you're doing it through the dial, where you actually set out where you're capturing stills with the RAWs and JPEG. Um, you're not recording video, you're recording stills. It's a function of stills. Right. The camera happens to be able to output in a time-lapse video. Right. That's at the end of the time-lapse. It says, do you want to make a video from this? Yes or no? And off you exactly. Go. If you're using the other faux way to do time-lapse, which is through VFR, you don't have autofocus in that, so you can't do focus transition. Uh -huh. Um the only way I know that you can do a uh, focus pull with a uh, time lapse capability of pretty much any camera is if you use something like the Aperture Deck system. Uh, the the it's a wireless controlled um, four thirds or micro four thirds to like EOS mount or something like that, because you're taking the autofocusing out of the rest of the system. Oh um, oh I see. So external hardware to actually physically rotate the, the focus control, something like that? It, yeah, yeah. Okay. So as it sits, unfortunately, you can't do it because regular time-lapse is not video. 
And VFR time lapse is in VFR, and you don't have autofocus. What is the slowest, longest focus pull that you can do? Do you know offhand? Um, I mean, obviously, it's going to depend on the distance between A to B, but. Yeah, so I mean, like, you can go um, kind of like how we have, like, with our burst rate uh, shooting. You have the ability to go SH, H, M, L, and SL. Okay. So SL would be like super, super slow. That's like a snail's pace. L is really low. Sure. M is kind of like what we suggest a lot of people start with. Do your first shot at M, see how it works. Mm -hmm. H and SH are really, really fast. SH is basically snap to point. Okay. So, I mean, you literally are snapping from one point to another sure. no matter where it is, whether it's at the far extent. So that's super slow. Do you have an idea like, I mean, focusing this distance, is it a second? Is it? half a minute like what type of um well that's going to depend on on like what you set yeah. so if i set this um i'm setting one up right now where, where is it's it i'll pull talking. it up on the menu here so under the main uh the top uh video mode so when you first go into video mm -hmm. you'll see that setting there for focus transition it's on the top of page two top of page two all right focus transition it says focus transition so if you go in and you set full, uh, and you go SL, which is super slow. Focus transition record. So focus transition speed will be um, the speed that you're you're uh, going to record at. Right. And you go super slow. And let's see, I just set one up here. So I'm recording. Uh... Yeah, this is like, this is really, really long. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, like, I clicked it a few seconds ago, and I still haven't reached the second position. Okay. I'm. Uh... Um, so let's see. I'm at position one right now. So start there. Set position two. Going, 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 going. <laughs> it looks like you have Who's to, to set the positions manually. Yes. So okay. you, you manually focus. You can do back button focus. So 24. Uh, so it takes almost 20 seconds to run through the through a full range on the 12 millimeter one four uh, from close focus to uh, uh, the extent of far, far end focus. OK. Um, so it's really, really slow. Um, in real world usage, you're probably never going to do a 20 or 25 second focus pull. Sure. Uh, that's really, really long. Um, but that's that, why we suggest typically use medium. But that could give you that kind of pseudo time lapsey type of a thing. Not, you know, an hour long time lapse, an overnight time lapse. But if you wanted to do a focus pull, maybe while the camera's on a slider, um, I don't know. You could you could change it up a yeah. bit. It's it's not going to be. I think what they're probably asking about is something like a you know starry night. I want to do a focus pull from. I don't know the tree to the mountain over the course of the evening, but yeah, um, that's that's a very different setup. And for something yeah. like that, you're probably going to use a lot of other added-on yeah. technology to the camera. Yeah. So as it sits right now, it's probably not um, the perfect setup for that. But with a few other pieces of equipment, it it probably could be. Yeah. Fair enough. Okay. All right. Next one. This is the last question under focus. Does Panasonic plan to make switchable settings for linear slash nonlinear focusing speed with fly, fly by wire lenses? Drive by wire. I think lenses would be more appropriate. Um, right now, focusing speed changes only, quote, nonlinearly based on how fast the focus ring is rotating. It's pretty inconvenient and unusual sometimes. I believe that can be adjusted with a firmware update because it's not a hardware issue. So. This is, again, that, that whole, like, I don't think it'll be a hard problem to figure out. But yeah. um, <clears throat> it's never really honestly been discussed that much because it's never really been brought to our attention um, as much as it has been recently. <laughs> um, and I think that has to do with, um, you know, more people using the GH4s and the, the GH5s and, and, in general, the mirrorless cameras. Uh, in the market that work, but you know, on focus by wire, but um, it's feedback that has been provided. Um, a lot of us have have given this this um, you know questions like this. We've provided them to the engineers to uh -huh. kind of find out: is it something that's doable? Is it a limitation in um, in the actual hardware that's built in for the lenses and the way it works? Right. 
uh, or is it something that could be done through um, firmware? I I wish I could tell you yes or no, but uh, the reality is is maybe maybe not. <laughs> Fair enough. A little bit of vagueness. A little there, bit of right? vagueness is a okay. All right, let's take another quick little break, and uh, and then we'll come back and get to the general questions, which is our biggest category, because I had no idea where to Perfect. put those questions. Right on. 